Now, it turns out there's a, an extended version of the pigeonhole principle that is slightly more powerful. Now, this says that if you're placing n pigeons into k pigeonholes, then there is at least one pigeonhole containing at least the ceiling of n divided by k pigeons. And recall that the ceiling function is the smallest integer greater than or equal to its argument. So in this specific example, if we have five mice and we're placing them in three teacups, when we divide five by three, the ceiling of that is going to be two. So this is saying there is at least one teacup that will have at least two mice in it. Now let's see how we can apply this extended pigeonhole principle. So in this problem, we have 25 people who go to yoga class at the same gym, and there are eight classes every day. Each attendee wears a blue, red, or green shirt, and we want to show that on any given day, there is at least one class where two people are wearing the same color shirt. Now, taking the statement as it is, there's many ways to think about this problem. So you could think about creating the pairs of class attended and shirt color. That might be one way to do this, but you can also do this more directly by using the extended pigeonhole principle and then the pigeonhole principle directly it's again. Okay, so 25 people go to yoga classes at the same gym that offers eight classes a day. So the first thing we want to do is we want to think about applying the extended pigeonhole principle in order to discern how many people are going to be in the classes. So we're going to let our n, our 25 people, those are essentially our pigeons, and we're going to put them in our k equal to 8 classes every day. So we're putting our, our our pigeons are the people attending the classes, our pigeonholes are the classes. Now the extended pigeonhole principle says that there is at least one hole, in this case at least one class that has at least n divided by k, so the ceiling of n divided by k, in this case 25 divided by k, attendees, which is 4 students attending. So this is an application of the extended pigeonhole principle. We know there's at least one class with at least four students attending. Now we can just apply the extended pigeonhole principle again, or we can just use the pigeonhole principle that we had done in the first part. So now we have four students. in the class, those are our pigeons, and the four students can wear three colors and our holes will be the three shirt colors. So our function is going to be mapping the, the student to the shirt color. So since the number of students is greater than the number of colors of shirts because there's four students and there's only three possible shirt colors, this means that at least two students in at least one class 
are wearing the same shirt color. Now, just as an aside, you could have also thought of this in terms of creating the ordered tuple of possible shirt classes and also colors of shirts. So you can you can think of it that way also. And that is also the, all the possible classes a person could attend and the color shirts that they can wear. It's another way to think of it. And sometimes students think of it that way. But this is the more direct way to do this by first applying the extended pigeonhole principle in order to discern that if you have 25 people attending eight classes, then at least one class must have at least four students. So that's where we get the at least one class from. And then for the four students in that one class, they only have three possible options of shirt colors. So that means at least two people will be wearing the same color shirt. In this problem, we'll also apply the extended pigeonhole principle in a way that we haven't yet. So we have a baseball collector who only collects baseball cards for NL West teams, and there are five teams in the NL West. We want to figure out what's the minimum number of cards that must be in the collection in order to guarantee that at least 100 cards are collected from the same NL West team. So in this case, it's different because now we're trying to figure out how many pigeons that we need. So here, our pigeons are going to be the cards in the collection. So that's our N that we don't know yet. And our holes are going to be the NL West teams. And we know that there are five of them. And our mapping is going to be the from the cards to the teams, and it's going to be the player to the team is the function that we have. So we want to have enough cards such that one team, so that's one pigeonhole, has at least 100 cards in it. And so recall from the extended pigeonhole principle, we want to figure out the n such that the ceiling of n divided by k, and in this case, we know that our we have five pigeonholes, five teams, is equal to 100. So how can we figure this out? Well, we know that if, for example, n is equal to 500, this statement would be true. We would have at least 100 cards for one NL West team, but that doesn't satisfy the problem because it's not the minimum number of cards. So we know that 500 would satisfy, but it's too many. Too many, but it satisfies. So now what you might think about is, well, if n were equal to 99 times 5, which is equal to 495, we know that the ceiling would just be 99, so that's too few. So the way that we can figure this out is that, well, if n is equal to 99 times 5 plus 1 to 496. We know now that the ceiling of 496 divided by 5 would be 100. And if there are at least 496 cards in the collection by the extended pigeonhole principle, there would exist 
at least one pigeonhole, or in this case, at least one NL West team with at least 496 divided by 5, the ceiling of that, so that's 100 cards in that have been collected from it. 